and innovative ways of providing lending are starting to emerge more rapidly due to the fact that there has been a tightening of credit procedures from the banks. One of these types of new facilities is asset-backed investment trusts, and I have Ray Trevisan from OTG Capital joining me today to discuss what they're all about. Welcome, Ray. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Darren. Look, why don't we start by just uh, having an explanation from you as to how asset-backed investment trusts actually work. Sure. That's a very common question, actually, Darren. And as the name implies, our investments are backed using uh, assets. So things like homes, uh, and again, people are very familiar with the fact that a mortgage is exactly that. It's an asset-backed loan. So when you go to a high street bank and you take out a mortgage, the bank actually owns the house until you've paid that loan off. And so our investments are business-to-business loans where we lend money to a pool uh, in a pooled fund environment, and that money goes out to borrowers, but as collateral or security, we use real property. And in this instance, it's usually residential property. And there's no other sorts of assets that, that you use to back these back these loans? It's just residential property? Well, in the case of OTG Capital, our constitution of the trust has been specifically set up so that we only use that type of collateral. And there's very good reason for that. There are a number of lending institutions out there today, and there's a wide variety now on the market today, that use things like commercial property, they might use rural, they may use business property. So, for example, uh, a company car or a printing press or computers. And again, there's nothing wrong with that style of collateral. However, uh, as an investor myself, we've been involved with asset-backed securities now for close to 20 years. And over that that time span and experience, we know the kind of collateral that really means something of value, we have found to be primarily residential property. And in that regard, our trust specifies that when we work with our wholesale providers, they are properties that are in popular markets that can then be turned into cash if we need to, should a borrower default. Okay. Uh, I mentioned at the start there are several different types of uh, lending sort of emerging in the market. Mm -hmm. Could we have a comparison between some of the other facilities out there uh, versus the asset-backed property trust? Say something like business-to-consumer lending. Sure. How does it differ from that? Well, I think... Because of, you know, the magazine being, you know, your primary readership is SMSFs, so your readers are looking for investments. And so they're looking for, you know, a range of investments that are going to give them a yield. And uh, those of you out in the big wide world that are planners always talk about risk. And so when you think about our trust, we place ourselves lower down on the risk curve. And so when you look at the wide variety of lending vehicles that are out there today, the real difference between all of them is where they sit on that risk-reward paradigm. And so when you think about consumer-to-consumer or business-to-consumer type loans and think about things like credit cards, Afterpay, Zippay, Nimble, uh, Wallet Wizard, now they are all small value, high volume types of loans and just about always unsecured. Now, many people don't realise, but if you go back and read your credit card statement, most people don't really look too hard, but they're being charged 24% Mm -hmm. on their money if they don't pay their monthly minimum or their actual, their their payout. And again, you know, the kind of uh, interest rates that are applicable to Nimble and uh, the personal, you know, the cash converter type loans is quite high. But again, people don't notice it simply because what they'll do, and it's called microfinancing. Mm-hmm. Um, when you borrow 50 or 100 bucks and you pay them back 55 or you know, $110 in a couple of weeks, they go, oh, that's not much. But if you were to annualise that, that's actually about 1,000%. <laughs> now, it sounds horrifying and people go, oh, my God, that's... But again, when it's only 5 or 10 bucks it doesn't really mean that much. And again, there's a a company today in Australia that pools investors' money and takes it to India and uses it for microfinancing. All unsecured, but it's incredibly safe, simply because the cultural aspects of Indian borrowers, they take it very much to heart. 
yeah. in paying loans back. Yeah. yeah. Here, I'm not quite so sure. I get the feeling that the average punter, if they don't pay their loan back, they're going, oh, well, too bad. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, in the markets that we deal in our OTG capital, we're much, much further down into a very, very safe area where we do a lot of due diligence with our borrowers and we also provide that level of security with a residential mortgage in a market that we can then translate that back into cash quickly if we need to. Yeah, yeah. And what about these cloud-based markets, I suppose you could Mm -hmm. could call, bringing lender and borrower together like that? Well, I I personally think they're a wonderful innovation because I actually come from an IT background. So when I see cloud-based solutions being used in this innovative way, and it's not new, by the way, it's been done for a long, long time. I mean, eBay is something people are familiar with, bringing buyer and seller together. But a platform, for example, like Ratesetter is a wonderful example where people are simply putting their requirements on a platform. Ratesetter is brokering between the borrower and lender, and then the market determines what's the adequate price of money to Mm -hmm. attract the investment, and then the person placing that money then makes an assessment on a number of factors. And again, my biggest thing would be, well, how much are you going to get and what risk are you taking? And so for mine, cloud-based platforms are perfectly valid ways of doing bonds, loans, mortgages or whatever. The only factor is in the way I differentiate what we do with our trust is it's about maintenance. Mm -hmm. So if an SMSF trustee looks at that and says, well, look, I think that's a really good way of going, and I can actually get one or two percentage points more than if I go with Ray's OTG Capital Trust, they're absolutely right. But what I say to them in contrast, though, is that they've then got to do all the management. They've got to scope out the deal. They've got to look under the covers and say, okay, what is actually there? What am I securing my money against? And this is where I take a step back and say, caveat emptor, buyer beware, because not every loan is the same. Yeah. And, and again, with fintech coming, the, the new companies are, are sort of heralding this brand new way of doing business. I'm sorry, but it's not. Mm. We've been borrowing and lending and paying back money since money was invented. Mm -hmm. And the kind of concepts that we're talking about today, when we borrow and pay it back either later on time and being charged interest, has been around since money was invented. And the principles of borrowing and lending and also losing your money haven't changed either. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, I say to people, look, there are always higher rewards out there but please don't tell me that the risks are all of a sudden taken away because I've got this fancy cloud platform and it waves the magic away. It doesn't. The risks are still there. And so when people ask me to compare what we do compared to other lending platforms, we are in the same sphere, Mm -hmm. but I tend to look at what I'm doing with my collateral as something that is far more rock solid. Yeah, yeah. So on the other side of things, are there any restrictions on what the borrowed funds are used for? That's a good question. You'd be surprised how many times I get asked that because people are always curious and they say, well, what are they going to use the money for? And I look at them and say, well, why do you care? I mean, you can go to the websites that, you know, tout these loans, but they're usually promoted as a B2B loan, so they might be for buying extra stock, making an acquisition paying a tax bill. I mean, that's a popular one simply because the tax office will come on, they didn't focus on their GST or their balance sheet, and all of a sudden they've got a tax bill which they've got to pay. And so what they'll then do is use a second mortgage on their home or a caveat lend to be able to satisfy a short-term requirement and then pay that loan off. So ultimately, we really don't care. It's their business. Mm -hmm. What we care about is the value of the property that they put up as the collateral and can they pay it back in a reasonable amount of time. In an SMSF context, Mm -hmm. what sort of role do you think that uh, an investment in OTG Capital can play in an SMSF portfolio? Yeah, again, a a really good question and I get asked this a lot when I go, uh, we sponsor stands and we we go to investment seminars like the AIA, etc. And they want to know, well, Ray, how much of my portfolio should I be doing? And I I look at them and immediately put my hands up and say, well, look, we don't give financial advice. But again, people that take time to become educated in investing, they understand the principles of a diversified portfolio. And 
all investors should have a really good handle on their own risk profile and their mm-hmm. appetite for risk. Mm-hmm. And so in answer to that question, I always simply say to them, look, if you are looking at a diversified uh, portfolio, we fit in an area where you may allocate a certain portion, not the entire lot, but a certain portion of your portfolio into an area where you get a regular monthly income. It's far down on the risk reward curve. It's not the sexiest returns, but it's certainly moderate, and it's roughly two and a half to three times the return of a bank deposit with similar collateral. Yep. And so we play it safe, we play it steady, and we play it consistent. Is it the whole game? No. But it forms part of a wider game. Yep. Well, fantastic. They were great insights, and thank you for your time today, Ray. Thank you so kindly for the opportunity. Mm-hmm.